What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial. So in today's video, we're gonna walk through using the first person tools to navigate your model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the reason this is important is because there's, there's a few different ways to navigate around in your model, but a lot of the time when you're trying to navigate in an interior, type model, it's you're gonna approach it differently than you would an exterior model. Like for example, if I've got this building right here, and this is a model I downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. So this is Apartment Home by Yash Chandak. And um, so like for example, if I, if I was to fly around the outside of this model, the orbit tool works great. So, you know, you click and hold your center mouse button and you move around your model just like this. And uh, it's really good for moving around the outside of your model. But once you kind of start getting inside, just like this, you know, and you kind of want to adjust what you're looking at and that kind of thing, you can see how it gets a lot harder to kind of fly around in here and get what you want using the orbit tool, which I think is what most people kind of use to fly around in their model. So what we're going to use is we're actually going to come in here and we're going to use SketchUp's built-in interior tools in order to navigate this model. So the way that you get to these tools is they're in the large tool set off to the side over here. So if you get a view, toolbars, and then you check the box for large tool set, you can find them in there. Um, I believe you can also find them in the camera toolbar. So if you check this toolbar, it'll pop up um, a camera toolbar right here. So those will also show up in there. So I'm just gonna keep using the ones off to the left over here, but these are basically the first person tools. And so there's three tools in here that I really wanna talk about. The fourth is the section tool, which I've done videos on in the past. We're not really gonna get into in super high detail right now. Um, so the first tool that we have in here is the place camera tool or the position camera tool. And you can basically use that to set your camera view. But before we even do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to create a scene with this camera view right here. Because a lot of the time what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of get out of everything and just kind of reset where you are. So this is a great vantage point to see my entire model in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to view, animation, and I'm gonna click add scene. And all that does is that saves this camera view in a scene. Now, no matter where I go, if I fly down in here and I kind of get lost inside of a wall or whatever, I can just click on that scene button to go back to my view that gives me an overview of everything. And so what I would encourage you to do is start setting up scenes for each view. Um, that you want to keep in your model, especially in an interiors model. And you can also go over to the scene section of your tray. It's just this uh, section in your tray over here. And if you don't see the tray, you can go to window, default tray, and you click the option for show tray. And then also make sure the option for scenes is checked so that this will show up over here. And so what's gonna happen over here is you're gonna have a list of your scenes and you can kind of adjust the way that those look. So I can set this up with thumbnails and a thumbnail will give me a little preview of what this scene looks like. But you can also come in here and you can adjust the details in here. So I'm gonna just name this overall view, just like this. And then I'm gonna click out of here so when I come in here and I name this overall view, you can see that this actually renames my view that I set in here. So now I have kind of an overall view of my, of my room right here. And so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the position camera tool. So the position camera tool basically lets you click on a point and set your camera there. So in this case, if I was to come in here and I was just a single click in my living room, for example, you can see how what this does is this comes in here, it sets my camera to that point and it switches me to the look around tool. And the look around tool just lets you click and drag to look around your room just like this. So, and one other thing I wanna note about the position camera tool is you can actually click and drag to set a point and also what you're looking at. So if I wanted to come in here with the position camera tool and look at my kitchen, I could click right here on this, on this face right here and I could click and drag towards my cabinets. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna set my camera view up, kind of looking at something just like this. All right, so the problem with this is when I click and drag like this and I click on my ground and then I 
click on this cabinet over here, or when I click and drag off the ground and I let up on this cabinet over here, you can see how it brings my camera in at a pretty low height. But you can see how what that does is when that brings me in with the look around tool, um, it lets me set my eye height. So it comes in at a default of zero inches, but if I was to type in five foot six inches with the look around tool active and hit the enter key, you can see how what that does is that moves my camera view up to five foot six inches. And so now with the look around tool active, I can click and drag to kind of fine tune what my camera view looks like. So, and this will automatically put you in that view whenever you set a point using the position camera tool. And the other thing I wanna do real quick is this is an example from my placemaker video from earlier this week. Uh, this is the extension that kind of builds a whole city. Um, and you can find that by looking on my channel. Uh, you can also find out some information on that by going to sketchupessentials.com slash placemaker. Uh, please note that that is an affiliate link, but it will get you some information about this extension if you're interested. Um, so, but basically what I can do is right now if I have this big city this is all kind of into scale and uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to get like a first person feel for how tall these buildings are so what I can do is I can activate this position camera click over here and then I can set my eye height to five foot six inches or something like that so you can also set the position camera tool to bring you in at a default height so you can see how when I click on the position camera tool, it says height offset. So if I set that to five foot six inches, and then I come over here and I just single click, it's gonna bring me in at a height of five foot six inches above the ground, just like this. And just note that doesn't really work if you do the click and drag to set your camera angle. So you'll have to adjust that after the fact with the look around tool. But now you can see what this does is this gives me this first person view where I can really get a feel for how tall these buildings are. So, and then once you come in here and you get your camera view kind of set, you can use the look around tool to click and look around without actually moving your camera. So if I click and drag like this, you can see how it lets me move around this whole room without actually moving forward. Where if I was to try to do this with the orbit tool, you can see how it kind of like rotates me through some walls. And uh, if I try to do it with the zoom tool, it's just not very precise. And another good example of this is if I get in a very, very, very small space like this apartment, you don't want to try to orbit because you can't go very far before you start running into walls. But what you can do is you can click and drag the look around tool to look around the room without actually moving and without actually like running into walls like this and that kind of thing. So the look around tool is great for looking around from a stationary point. And then once you're kind of in a space like this, because you don't really want to use the orbit tool, I'm going to go ahead and set my eye height to five foot six inches. But really the best way to move around in a space like this is to use the walk tool. So the walk tool is the icon that just looks like these little feet. And what this does is it allows you to click on a point, um, click and drag, and kind of move your your camera view forward and backwards and sideways and stuff while locked at a certain height so you can see how it's like you're actually walking around in a room so this is way better for like fine control so you can see how it's real easy for me to kind of move around in here using the walk tool so and the other thing about the walk tool is you're pretty much always clicking and holding your mouse down to move around just like this so all i'm doing is i'm moving my mouse forward and backward while holding the mouse key down but if you hold the shift key what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you move your camera up and down by dragging your mouse forward and backward. It'll also let you move your camera left and right. So if you don't hold the shift key forward, you're gonna be moving forward and backward. If you do hold the shift key down while you're doing this, you're gonna be moving left and right. All right, so now that you know how to move your camera forward and back by clicking and holding or clicking and dragging, and also how to move it up and down and left and right by holding the shift key. So by default, when we're working with the walk tool, SketchUp has collision detection enabled. So like for example, if I come over here and I try to walk into this room with the walk tool active, and I run into this door, SketchUp's not gonna let me walk through the door. You can see how I'm kind of running into the door, but it won't let me move forward anymore. So that's collision detection. What that means is when you're walking around in your SketchUp model, by default, the walk tool has uh, collision detection enabled. So what that means is it won't let you walk through anything solid. So you can walk into this couch or whatever. So if I click over here, 
You can see how it won't let me move any further forward than this, even though I still have the walk tool active because I've got this couch down below that's kind of blocking me. So you can turn that off with the walk tool by holding the alt key. So while you have the walk tool active, like if I walk up to this door, drag into it, it's not gonna let me walk through it, but if I hold the alt key, you can see you can see how it just let me walk right through that door. So same thing with the, this bathroom door over here. It won't let me walk through. And then as soon as I tap the Alt key, it lets me walk right through the door. So that's really, really important for being able to move through a model in case uh, your camera gets stuck or something like that. That's how you walk through walls is by holding the Alt key. So in the last thing I wanna talk about just a little bit is field of view. So field of view talks about how has to do with how uh, how much you're picking up with your current camera. So like for example, right now I've got this interior and uh, my view feels a little bit narrow. It's not as bad in this space right here, but let's say I was to go over here into this bathroom. So like, let's say for example that I've got this bathroom right here. You can see how I can't see very much with my camera angle right now. And so what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna activate the zoom tool. And if you hold the shift key and click and drag with the zoom tool, you can see how my camera field of view is getting bigger. So in this case, if you look down in the corner after I activate the zoom tool, it tells me how many degrees my field of view is picking up. So like by default, if I type in 35 degrees and hit enter, this is kind of the default field of view, which works great for the exterior of buildings, but not so much the interior. So usually what you can do is you can come in here and you can type in a field of view like 50 or 75 degrees, just like this in order to pick up more with your camera. And you do have to be careful because you can get some serious distortion in your images by setting this field of view all the way. But I usually find something between 75 and 90 usually picks up a pretty good amount of this so by coming in here and adjusting your field of view you can adjust how much you can see on the interior of your model so and then the last thing I want to talk about is while you're doing this be thinking about what views you want to keep so like for example if you think that you're gonna keep this first-person view of this ba bathroom then once you kind of get your camera in a place where you're picking up everything that you want just come up here to your animations right click and click add to update a scene and then go ahead and call that something like bathroom so if you come in here and you start naming these scenes just like this, then you can save yourself a whole lot of time because what you can do is you can start just clicking on those scenes in order to get to them quickly. So in this case, let's say I wanted a view of this kitchen or something like this. I just set my camera where I want it to be. You can go ahead and adjust your field of view however you want. So like, for example, if I wanted more like a 50 degree field of view, I could go ahead and set that. And then I would just add a scene for the kitchen and I would come over here and I would name that kitchen in the scene section. And so, and this will save your field of view of your camera too. So like if I go up to my overall view like this, you can see how my field of view adjusts to that 35 degrees, which is default. But if I click on the kitchen and I have the zoom tool active, you can see how it sets my field of view to 50. Or if I click in the bathroom, it'll set my field of view to 75 because that's what, that's what the field of view was when I set this room. And so by doing this, you can basically create all of your different views in here so that you can navigate around your model without even having to use the walk tool or anything like that, um, which is really useful for presentations and that kind of thing. Because most of the time you wanna try to avoid using the walk tools or the move around tools. Um, it's way better to go ahead and just preset all of your different views in here. So like I would set another one here for living room. But if you preset all these different views, then all you have to do is click between them and you don't have to worry about struggling with walking through walls or anything like that. You can just kind of fly through your different views really fast. So anyway, this was just this was just kind of a high level overview of the first person uh, camera tools in SketchUp. I will tell you that this is so much easier and the, these make navigating around the interior of a model so much easier. So I really recommend you guys give it a try. It's just way, way better than trying to move around with the zoom and the orbit tools inside your model just like this. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using the first person tools? Have you found that they make navigating around the interior of a model easier? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. 
Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.